Um, okay, so let's get started. As a reminder, use the sketched app, um, rate the talks to select who's, which of the speakers will be the winner for the Oculus or the Nintendo Switch, uh, sponsored by IBM. And also that will give you a entry uh, that you'll be able to write your name. I'm going to do a raffle for one of the two. Um, we haven't decided which one is for the speaker and participant. So to wait for the noise. Um, so let's get started with the first talk is uh, the KNCLI. I'm excited to see this one. I'm a fan of the KNCLI, the one-stop shop by David and David. Thank you, guys. Hello, Hello everyone. Welcome, Welcome to, to the presentation, presentation KN, uh, the one-stop shop for Kinetive. I am Naveed, software engineer at VMware, and I've been working on KNCLI. So I have here with me David. Yep. Yep. Hello. So I am uh, actually David, uh, one of the working group leads in uh, Kinetive client, uh, working with Red Hat uh, currently. And uh, just the background story, we used to work with Naveed as I have joined the serverless team in, in Red Hat. And, uh, unfortunately, he left to VMware, but uh, we were colleagues and we are still like a good friend, friends. So, uh, uh, back to the presentation then. Uh, so, my first slide uh, is trying to answer the like the common question that can be asked: uh, Is KN yet another CLI tool, and what is the like the value proposition? Uh, to use KN instead of uh, kubectl and uh, plain YAMLs. Uh, so I think the team's team was uh, uh, ongoing pretty much with other presentations from uh, from functions guys uh, and uh, like the developer oriented uh, uh, talks uh, that maybe not everybody is fan of uh, uh, YAML and uh, YAMLs at all and, and all the declarative stuff. And uh, for that, uh, KN is trying to be uh, a bit different uh, with uh, imperative style of commands and with uh, the proposition that we really know uh, what Knative is about and we know the resources, we are typed for it and we would like to help the either uh, beginners but also like uh, veterans uh, that are trying to to do a lot of stuff uh, with Knative resources deploying services uh, traffic management uh, then go, going to integrations with uh, uh, eventing uh, sources triggers brokers uh, like uh, to cover everything from the uh, first uh, uh, like first-class citizen uh, support for uh, Knative. Uh, I think you can continue. All right. All right. So, so why KN, KN is one-stop shop? So, so we'll see like how to get started with KN, KN and Knative in, in like a few minutes. minutes. So, so this is how you install KN. KN. We have it registered on Brew Package Manager. So you just do Brew install KN. KN. And it gets you KN installed. Um, as you do KN version, you can see that uh, you'll see what all KN is serving and eventing version it supports. Uh, note that this is showing the versions of serving and eventing that we support, not the ones that you have installed. Um, all right, and uh, let's take a quick look at how you can get started with uh, a Knative setup. If you are new to Knative, you have a working Docker uh, setup on your local machine. So we have, uh, you know, I'm going to give a sneak peek into the Quick Start plugin that Carlos and Paula has been working. So this this can get you started with Knative in five minutes. So you install the plugin Quick Start, and you just do KN Quick Start kind. You can also do Minikube. So this is how you know it takes. So just take a look at the last second last line. It it got you uh, a Knative cluster on Kind in five minutes, and you are you are ready to go. Um, this is just a quick installation of like how does the serving and eventing installation looks like. So we are passed through the installation, and let's take a look at you know how you know KN interacts with um, Knative. So it just works everywhere. So KN strictly uh, works with uh, the API contract of Knative. So whether you have Kubernetes cluster on any of the Kubernetes provider, 
you just install um, Kinetio APIs, serving and eventing APIs on top, and you're 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 ready to go. Um, apart from that, um, as David mentioned, like we have rich ecosystem of plugins, so we do have a special use case plugins which can work with uh, directly with um, Kinetio APIs or it can work, uh, work with uh, the Kubernetes cluster that you have. So any specific requirements uh, on, the, on the Kubernetes distribution that can be expanded to KN via the plugins. But KN, if, if you bring up a um, Kinetio installation on OpenShift or on Tanzu or on AKS, uh, KN can just strictly work. All right. So going directly into uh, serving support, um, I will just quickly recap and remind that uh, uh, serving is serving the application workloads for the uh, uh, serverless applications actually, and with the scale to zero capability. I I don't uh, well, I don't want to reiterate any that was already uh, said about the serving. So I will just keep it. Uh, KN, uh, KN centric from now on. So we do offer the standard like uh, CRUD operations for uh, for all the serving resources uh, with like an extensive service configuration support. And I, I have a slide prepared with uh, all the flags that we have for the services. There is a couple dozens of them and it might be pretty hard to keep uh, with all the annotation formats or anything you you would like to uh, do with your services with regard the configurations and all the options you would like to set up so we are trying to offer the convenient way for the developers to power through the help messages and uh, quickly find the, the correct flag without uh, the uh, additional knowledge of the full formats and, and uh, so on. So with the traffic management support, uh, we are also trying to ease up the burden uh, with uh, deployments of new revisions and splitting the, uh, the traffic into uh, uh, multiple revisions with percentages going to, uh, to each one of, of those and so on. Uh, that will be hopefully better shown in a, in a demo later. And one of the like uh, uh, things that we really that are really 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 keen on for the can is like wait for ready support. So that's built in into uh, our every like every KN service create command uh, would by default wait for the service to be ready, which seems to be very handy when you are uh, trying to develop uh, a new and create uh, and deploy a new uh, Knative service, uh, K -Native service uh, and just get that instant feedback if it is working or not, if it, if it will eventually get ready and be prepared for you or there is a, there is a problem like an image pool maybe or uh, whatever might be. So with other features, there is a, a apply command, uh, very, uh, very much the same as the kubectl with that uh, regard that it is able to actually merge our Knative custom resources. Uh, so it is something extra that uh, it's pretty hard to do with uh, just uh, um, plain uh, kubectl. And finally, we are not uh, like ditching all the YAML support and uh, there is a way uh, to actually generate a lot of, uh, or actually generate those outputs that we would normally do on the backend uh, in a GitOps mode. So you, would, uh, uh, you could store that, uh, get the YAMLs, edit them by yourself, or, or just uh, see the, plainly see the outputs and uh, uh, use them in a, in, a, uh, in a version mode that you would uh, just uh, keep it uh, in your Git repository and uh, work from there. Uh, so uh, with the, this slide should illustrate our offering for the serving part of uh, Knative. As you can see, we are uh, uh, we have that format of uh, uh, 
noun as a name for the resource and then uh, a verb to manipulate it. And I will show you a few examples of uh, very basic uh, service create command as, as first. Uh, it's as easy as calling a name of the service and uh, the source uh, of the image you would like to uh, create. Uh, this one is uh, update of the service with uh, a new uh, target environment variable and traffic splitting to 50%. So the uh, previous one would get 50% and the new one created would get another 50. And as I have mentioned, there is an extensive list of all the flags that almost didn't make it to the slides. <laughs> And finally, uh, I haven't mentioned that in, in the, serv uh, like the first serving slide. Uh, we have also support for something like adding a multi-container service. So you are essentially just building it through uh, normal Unix pipes. So container add uh, will actually generate that uh, uh, podspec, podspec uh, uh, chunks of YAMLs. Uh, and we'll feed it to two containers through uh, through the pipe, and that can be pretty handy if you are working with uh, a lot of containers that we would like to specify for the for the one service. And back to you. thanks, David. So, so now we're gonna see um, so KN supports all the native resources of eventing. That, that has like sources, brokers, subscriptions, and channels, uh, the complete CRUD operations for all these resources. Um, it also supports like all the sources that Kinetive provides, the API server source, container source, and ping source. And with the extensible me mechanism of plugins, we are also able to do the CRUD operations on the extended sources, for example, Apache Kafka and Camlets. So we'll see like how you can expand Kinetive um, with plugins to also support these extended sources in the ecosystem. Um, here we see um, the KN support for all the eventing um, resources that Kinetive um, eventing provides. So as you can see, for, for channels and subscription, we have complete CRUD operation support. Beside on sources, um, um, like we have list and list types uh, commands, which will list you all the types of sources available in your cluster, so so that you can do the CRUD operations on them. Um, and then since uh, we have like one more layer of SF commands for source, uh, so you can work with specific sources in your cluster like API source and binding. And for all of them, we support um, the CRUD operations. Um, here is a quick example to give you a sneak peek, uh, like how you can achieve um, the diagram that's uh, presented above. Uh, y came and came, uh, y came and came and without writing um, a single YML file. So as you can see here, uh, we are trying to build um, a couple of sources that's um, that's sending events to a broker, and then then we have a couple of triggers which will be triggered based on a particular filter that uh, you know we can embed in the uh, cloud events in, uh, itself. And then we have uh, a couple of interested things that want to subscribe, you know, that we, we want to land events to. So as you can see, we'll start from the left. We'll, we'll uh, create a couple of things there. So the green uh, boxes maps to the green commands. So you, you create a couple of services, um, S1 and S2. And then uh, the broker create is simply KN broker create. It will use whatever you have configured by default in your cluster, if it's empty channel or if it's, uh, some other uh, broker implementation. Um, then we, we create a couple of triggers here uh, with, where we say that we want to filter on cloud events um, that are of type, say, ping is equal to two. Uh, so this is the filter that we are using. That, that will identify the cloud events that we are interested in. And finally, we are seeing here the sync. With the sync flag, you say like what would be the destination of these cloud events. And with broker, we are mentioning that, um, you know, we want to receive the event from this broker. Um, finally, um, you know, we send the event, we are sending events here with the ping source, uh, default source. And uh, we, want, we want to specify like we want to send the destination of these events to the broker. And um, 
here this C override stands for cloud event override. So with with the default um, parameters that, that that land in them, you know that has in the cloud event, we are saying that also add ping is equal to one additional key value in the cloud event, so that you know trigger can filter on it, and we are saying. This, this, this is the additional data that we want to send to it. I think that's all. Once once this is in place, uh, you know, your events triggered from the sources uh, are then received in Sing. So if you want to implement all of that uh, using YAML, so you'll have a bunch of YAMLs that you need to create in order. But KN gives you this um, easy to use CLI options. Uh, we'll see the demo of this uh, later. Um, let's move to plugins. So. Uh, KN provides kubectl-like plugin architecture. You just need to have your plugins with a prefix KN plugin so that KN can understand it. And you can put it in your path or a directory that you can specify in your config directory. Um, so with that, you know, KN um, plugin prefix all the binaries. KN provides a command structure uh, for how your plugin would be invoked. For example, if you are doing a Kafka source plugin. So you would say KN plugin source Kafka. So you, you will have KN source Kafka command available. Um, we also have inlining mechanism. So if there is a vendor who has a plugin specific to their Kubernetes distribution, they can inline the plugin right in KN and produce a binary. Um, We'll, we'll see how, how that's done. Beside, like, we have a bunch of plugins in place. The quick start plugin that we saw earlier uh, is also one of the plugins that's around. Um, as, as you can see here, we have an admin plugin uh, that gives you, uh, you know, all, all the utilities to work with Kubernetes um, a cluster, uh, a diagram plugin, uh, a function plugin that, um, that we just saw the presentation earlier. Um, and as you can see, the, the, the last two ones are the extended, uh, you know, the, the additional ecosystem sources of eventing like Kafka and Camlet. So you would be able to invoke the plugin like KN source Kafka and all the commands beneath. All right. So how do you do the plugin inlining? Um, the, so on the plugin source, you mentioned that, you know, these are the metadata of the plugins and on the KN side you need to specify you need to wire this plugin in your KN source and after once that's done you just do go mod vendor so it pulls in your uh, plugin source code and builds it together so we have a, a handy script hack build that you can once you pull in the dependency you just build it and you will have your plugin embedded with KN so that you can distribute your uh, plugin with KN directly all right over to David. Okay, so we are closing to the demo side. Uh, here is the like the overview of what we will see on uh, a pre-recorded video. Uh, it's a very basic uh, like a processing service broker and uh, even display service uh, just to display the the services eventually. Uh, what we are going to do is uh, create every resource uh, with uh, KN commands, uh, create triggers to uh, uh, to define the uh, relationships, uh, to, to define filters, and uh, uh, finally we will try to, there are two implementations and we do have a, like a environment variable uh, feature switch to switch to fast processing uh, for the new implementation and we will uh, redirect like 50% of it to to our service and if we are finally happy with what we see and what we have tested from uh, from that like AB uh, testing first uh, we can um, redirect the whole traffic to the to the latest uh, revision and how that should work in practice. Okay. I will increase the quality. Hopefully that will look a bit better. Uh, okay, so we are calling in the 
I'm sorry. Okay, I can pause now. Okay, so uh, we are currently in the uh, KN service create uh, first. As and, and as you can see, there is. Uh, a uh, bit more output than just that the service was created because uh, it is running in a synchronous mode. So we are waiting until the service actually reports that it is ready. And afterwards, we just describe the service to get maybe a bit more details, uh, like uh, what's the URL, what uh, what image it is running, and uh, like the you can see also the revision split and, and some of the uh, uh, statuses as well. Uh, so we do the same for the uh, event display uh, service. I won't pause for that. I will just keep it uh, going. Uh, so describe the uh, event display as well. Uh, afterwards, uh, we are creating the broker here. Uh, that's not synchronous, so it is not telling us too much. Just uh, Describe command can can tell us that it is ready. Uh, on the right hand side, I am setting up the uh, logging monitoring with a service log plugin. So uh, also through everything is done through KN commands. So as you can see, we are watching the uh, process service log up here, and on the uh, bottom left, uh, bottom right, uh, we are uh, having the event display. Uh, so right now uh, we are, we are creating the triggers. Uh, one will trigger uh, one will filter messages going f from broker to processing service, and the processing service is actually set up to to reply back to the broker with a different type of uh, cloud event that we will filter then through the event display. And right now, I am going to uh, invoke the uh, event plugin that is very handy to actually test your uh, test your setup or just to produce uh, events into uh, brokers or uh, into other kinds of things that are addressable. And you can uh, there is uh, the event plugin is uh, one of the plugins that are released with uh, with KN altogether. Uh, and consumed through homebrew tabs, and it, there is a build command to uh, to build up your your uh, cloud events. If you would like to have a bit more fields, right now I am just uh, specifying the the type here, and uh, like one of the field is uh, uh, knativecon, and hopefully. We will see that processed on the right side, and it took about five seconds. And uh, finally, we we see that uh, the message was received on the event display side. Uh, so then we are going to uh, the traffic split. So it, it uh, there was. Uh, uh, traffic split uh, or, or the traffic uh, flag uh, refactoring recently that allows us to actually uh, mesh everything together in a, in a way that we are updating the service with a new environment variable that will create a new revision. But we are also specifying that for that new revision that will be created, uh, the, uh, it should receive the 50% of traffic. So in one command, you are uh, getting like uh, both operation. So, uh, all together. So through describe, we should see that uh, we have now a 50-50 split in uh, for the two replicas. And finally, the uh, script is going to create uh, uh, ten event or send ten events into into our processing service. As, and you can see that there the. The starting is the uh, name of revision, and which revision is like uh, processing uh, the re received event. So uh, there is a 
there is some split and the, revi uh, the second revision is actually pretty pretty fast compared to the first one uh, and doing more work on it. Yeah, so that's wrap of our demo. And I think we can go directly to, to questions or, oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, uh, so the roadmap. Uh, what we are actually looking for uh, to, to do uh, in the uh, client realm, there is a feature track to, uh, for the context sharing for plugins that would be especially helpful for something like uh, functions because functions can be run as a, uh, as a standalone binary but also as a Knative plugin. And the idea is that uh, functions and KN would be aware of each other uh, to share the, the common uh, things like service name and so on. So you could operate on, if you are in the functions context, operate on that uh, pre-created function, functions for your uh, function and so on. Uh, other than that, we have the broker spec management that is going to be implemented uh, that we need to actually really think about how to approach because every every uh, broker might have a different uh, solution for the uh, configuration either from config map to custom resource so we need some uh, uh, good ux how to actually approach it and uh, from other things the plugin discovery and management is uh, another big, big thing and i think max is working on uh, on the plugin to actually better search for plugins uh, so that would be nice to have and liveness and readiness probe. We don't have that support for serving and we are looking for it. Okay, and now we can continue to questions. Testing, testing. We have uh, questions. We have one question. Thank you, gentlemen, for the presentation. Um, so last year, I had to develop two plugins uh, for KN. And um, maybe some feedback for you, or things have changed and improved since then. So th what I was struggling with is standard patterns, like listing, a JSON formatted output. So basically, I was going back to the KN code base and copied over a lot of like libraries and some internal code path to follow the same like KN broker list, KN broker describe. Like, I think there's a lot of pattern that these plugins should be reusing. Or am I, can you hear me? Okay, because you were. Um, and just to make it easier to use for these plugin developers and have documentation or shared libraries like the KN package, Knative package, right? If you build on these sources, I, I just go to the package and I use the signals package to follow the conventions there. And I would, it would be great to have that for some of the plugins, either on a documentation or shareable like libraries code. Uh, same for authentication, plugins need to do authentication and I had to reinvent a lot of stuff. Yeah. So we do have, we, we, do, we did set up a client PKG on the main uh, KNAT organization, but we haven't been doing a great job moving a lot of uh, shared code there. So like our approach would be that uh, anything that would be valuable sharing with uh, plugins would be uh, consumed from client PKG and, and client would, would then depend on client PKG as well for all those common toolings or common utilities uh, that would uh, that could be um, uh, shared so yeah it's it's on the roadmap uh, for it and also like contributions are always welcome and we we do struggle a little bit with uh, with uh, uh, actually the manpower to do that so yeah but it it we are thinking about it and we, the, it is uh, on the roadmap Thanks for the feedback, Mac. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.